Hello. Hi. I can't believe to sit here and presenting Arturo El Gabbiano. What is a Gabbiano? It's a? A seagull, or in Spanish? Gaviota, Arturo de la Gaviota. <laughs> okay, let's see a first video introduction. Who I am? Okay, I'm Luca. I come from Gaeta. It's a little town near Naples. And in Gaeta, there are a lot of Arturo and Gabbiani, Arturo and Seagull. So, uh, I am a 3D artist. I'm uh, a drawer. And I work in a little company in Rome. Uh, and we made uh, animation for film, TV, um, and series. So, what about the project? Arturo and Gabbiano is a short movie that I started uh, almost seven years ago, and I interrupted it because I haven't skills. It was like this five years, seven years ago, so it was horrible. And uh, last, last year, in March, um, last March, I started the idea to finish and restart this movie and to direct and produce the short movie, of course, in Blender. So uh, what's about the plot? The story. The story is very simple. There are three or four gags about the, this old man and a seagull. And uh, this adventure are in this little town that is also my city. So this is our render. And uh, what about the team? Of, co of course, uh, we, we didn't play, we did we didn't work alone. So I work with a lot of people, a screenwriter, animator, music music concept art, who made props or animator, and one of them is Nicolas, who can come here, talking about how we worked. Hi there, I'm Nicolas. I'm, this is not officially my, my introducing. I want to do it <coughs> later, but here. As I work remotely, uh, because they live in the most beautiful city ever, that's Rome, and <laughs> I live in North Italy, near to the Alps, so it's okay. Uh, we just see in Sketch a lot. The guy like, is doing like this, like what the heck, is the animation supervisor, who is trying to give me some advices, but uh, as you can see, I don't understand what he's saying. So he's suffering a lot. Uh, we did it. I did my best to follow all the, all <laughs> the animation supervisors to, to finish the product. Okay, uh, this is Lucas' time. I, I'll be back later. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was too optimistic last year because I tried to make a Gantt uh, in, it finished the work in eight months. It was impossible. So I produced it in uh, one year and a half, and I just finished um, a month ago. Now I have a distrib distributor for Italian festival, also international, so I can show the full entire movie online. So it's also a just a making. So um, I divide, of course, the production in the pre-production, production, and post-production. And uh, about the production, the, the pre-production, I started by simplifying the old uh, screenplay. And uh, it, is, it is written by Alessandro Rizzi, who is a movie critic and writer. And uh, we try to simplify also according to my skills. And uh, I try to in, also to the the production possibilities. 
So we started making concept about the main character, Arturo, and uh, a lot of, of draw about also the seagull, the facial expression. Uh, we also change a lot the, the, um, the main character. Also the concept art for the, the environment, uh, because it's... Uh, and, and we, we go on, on the storyboard, we made it by hand, and uh, after, after it we pass in, the, in, in, in Blender to, to have our video board. And we use also Attract for the, uh, for the 3D asset and the man, uh, manager, so we can, go to, we can control the, all the production. After that, I recorded the entire movie with the help of my friend, uh, an actor who is a clown, and so he gave the, a great uh, um, personality to the, to the main character, and he also tried to, uh, to make also the, the seagull with references. So we, we tried to, to give personality with a, a this character. Also the facial expression. What about the look dev? So, two main characters, Arturo and Seagull. And we can show a quick video for the, for the look there. This is a turnaround for, uh, with the, an HDR. See the, the lighting, how the light compared with on the model. And uh, this one are the skin shader for uh, for the head, we used the uh, principal shader, and uh, during the production, we switched to 2.8, so we used also the random walk, in this, and we used Eevee for, uh, f to control the skin. Of course, we used a lot of maps for uh, each part of the, of the character. For the hair, we, I used three particle system. Uh, one particle system for the, base for the base particle and two particle system to control the haircut. For uh, rig, we use uh, two different rig. Brand rig for Arturo. And Nicholas, if you want to say something about the rig. Uh, yeah, real quick, because this is not, not my part, because I, I didn't do the rig. I got to the, produ to the production afterwards. He used blend rig for the, for the main character, which is super awesome, but it's also super complex and very <laughs> kind of tricky to use. And for the seagull, he used uh, Rigify, the regular Rigify. Uh, Lucas is doing his, some facial testing here. Yeah, exp facial expression test. Uh, he, but he, he did the skinning and the rigging uh, because, as I said before, I, I got after I just animated in this project, mainly, mainly animated. I did help with some renders, but uh, my main part was animation. Luca? Yeah. I think we can go on because <coughs> the video is so long. And um, yeah, we can go on. So we use also Post Library for, uh, for expression because we. We had three animators, and it was useful to have uh, a library for the principal uh, for the principal shape of the of the, the main character. And uh, a funny thing is that uh, we had a, lo a long conversation on Blender Arsis about uh, fear of filter on chest, and uh, Seagull had uh, little little fear little feather on chest. And uh, at the end, I, try, I, I decided to use fur on the chest, and on the back, and on the wings, feathers. And I don't know if, at, at, at the end, if this, the best way for, for the skin, but it was useful to have fur on the chest. It was more con comfortable. Now the environment, uh, the environment uh, looked at. So in this movie, we have four, uh, four environments. So the exterior, the dock, and we have a lot of building, a lot of props in this, in this, in this environment. The interior house, 
Lixero Street, and a lot of water in this movie. So, a lot of water. And we made a lot of uh, photo reference for the dock in particular, and, uh, and also a lot of props of buildings, almost 15 buildings that we populate the, the scene. And it was a uh, very, uh, very weird, this, this scene. Um, this one is a look there for props that we use it in a different scene. Uh, for all props, we made uh, different tests about lighting because there are different, uh, different light during, the, um, during the, the short movie, night, uh, there is a sunset, the day. At the end, other props. And after that, oh, I think I lost some texture. And OK, it's, it's color. It's not good. Nicolas. OK, now I one. officially introduce myself. This is, of course, it's a, show, it's a joke, because we, have, we really have a lot of problems with packing libraries and business files. We should put this uh, slide before, of course. I'm Nicolas. I'm from Argentina, but I live in Italy. Uh, do you like my font? Um, the vanilla walk. Why the vanilla walk? Because when I got to the production, uh, the production was uh, like almost one year, uh, started one year before. So a uh, lot of animation were done. But I asked uh, Luca to get confident with the rig and with the character. So the first thing I asked him to do is a vanilla walk. What's a vanilla walk? It's a uh, walk without personality, a very regular, uh, it's, it's not a personality walk, but it's just a regular with no personality walk, okay? So this is the first thing I do. The importance of the, of the video reference. I shoot my, my own video reference in a very nice uh, room like that, so I can, I can see my head going up and down, my hips going up and down, the, foot, the, the feet going left, right, and uh, also forward. And this is what I did. This is far from perfect. It, it was my first um, test, and we, we already know that this uh, wasn't going to, to end in the movie. And we can see the hand has the correct, the incorrect uh, angle in the fingers, because this was before Hjalti Hjalmarsson uh, yesterday lecture. Now I know, <laughs> and I already fixed it. So I'm sorry, Hjalti, but that was before yesterday. I did, I already did it. Thank you, thank you so much. I already fixed it, so please, you don't watch that. Okay, but then <laughs> we have to know that a vanilla walk is a walk without personality, but we don't animate 3D models, we animate characters. So we have to begin personality. We, um, we had this, uh, this footage from the Salvatore, from the guy. This is the kind of walk Arturo has to, to have. And this was my first step doing, doing it. It's a kind of different because he has a different body and a different stay of, uh, of default pose because um, Arturo has not a default pose like this. He's already bended, curved in, in forward. And he's also carrying a, um, an envelope here with some pictures or something. Uh, so this was my, my first step. Now, it's important when we have to understand when we have to follow the reference, and we have to start to deviate from the reference. As you can see, the, the position is not exactly, because we have some problems, like the elbow here was too unnatural, less, uh, kind of awkward. So we have to adapt him, have the, the position of the feet, the position of the elbow, the position of the torso. So that was really tricky. Um, but we, I did my best, of course. For example, here, we have a shot in the, in the garden. He's almost falling asleep, waiting for the seagull, waiting for the gaviota. <laughs> Something happened that we have to, to say, oh, come on, get away, get away. A cat cuss comes. Um, Luca asked me to not do it exactly the same, but have to, we need to have some differences. For example, here, there is a, um, the guy never looks to the camera because he's a really good actor. He knows he doesn't need to do that. But uh, Luca wanted, at, the same, at a certain point when he wakes up, like, uh, walk, walk, uh, watch into the audience and say, oh, what's happening? What's, what's wrong here? Something is wrong. Something woke me up. So little uh, different pieces of, uh, um, not the exact reference, but trying to deviate him from him. 
Then I had to animate La Gaviota, the seagull. And one of the things I'm learning right now, because I'm an animation mentor, is when we, we take an animal and we have to animate it in the wrong way to make it look good, because lots of animals have a very weird way to, to move and to walk, and if you do it realistically for the audience, uh, it, it's going to look uh, off, it's going to look like, okay, this is fake, this is 3D. So you have to do it in a kind of wrong way to make it look natural. Is it correct? <laughs> That's what they told me. Uh, so here we have a real gaviota, a real seagull, taking off. And we're going to, to see it in a slow motion. He doesn't, it doesn't do too much overlap. I mean, he goes kind of straight, and then he goes a little bit of overlap, but it's not... It's not much. I mean, as you can see, it's going almost straight, and then it, it, then it does something. But uh, we talk a lot, a lot uh, with Luke about that. We prefer to do it a little, bo a little bit more organic. This is a kind of uh, one of uh, the styles where La Gaviota has, the, the seagull has different style of, of flight. This is the relaxing one, when the moves starts here in the hips, and then it goes a little bit of overlap. Uh, it propagates at the end of the, of the body, in front and uh, behind. Okay, we, can, we, call this, we decided to call this the relaxed way of flight. As you can see, the move uh, starts in the hips, or, or I th what I think is the, the hips. This is the more aggressive, uh, we call it aggressive way of flight. Uh, here, the, the head is leading, so the, the one before, the, the, the hips were leading the movement. Here we have the head is leading, and then the movement propagates until the, the tail. So we have a different kind of overlap, just a little bit. Here we have uh, the difference. You can see the relaxed one and the more aggressive one. I cannot explain why we call aggressive, because it's not an aggressive way. Of, it's not a dragon. But I cannot say now. Okay, you can see, you can barely notice it, but this is a relaxed one when Arturo watched for the first time the seagull on the sky. And here we have a, take, a taking off in the, in, the, in the other way when the head is leading moving because it's almost uh, escaping for him. We have a more clear shot when Arturo tries to do a picture of the seagull, but he, he never can do it. And so the seagull is almost like, okay, you cannot get, you cannot get me. You are not going to take me a picture. Sorry about my voice. And Luca, this is ah, your time. Yeah. The last video, yes, it's a little breakdown about how we did render and compositing. So, yeah. We have different render layer for most of the scene. Uh, other one, we, we, we had only one render layer. Yeah, we also use a mask for adding more life in the in the environment. Uh, this one is the I think the most complex scene because uh, the first one because we had clouds, uh, sky, and all the duck with uh, with all, with a lot of building. So here we want to see the you can see the, the final final render, the render layer, and uh, this one is a is a just a turnaround of the scene. Okay, and at last we render everything with curl weave. If you, Marco, if you can say you have something about the complexity. Oh, oh, oh. Marco. Do you hear me? Yeah, good. Oh, I'm <laughs> close to him. Yeah. Note about uh, what happened with, uh, with Luca. No. Is, uh, it was very. Do you have it? It's okay, otherwise. Uh, what Luca asked us was to not compromise the quality of. Thanks. Um, not compromise the quality of the practical job that we're doing when don't you because of the render time. If I, yeah. uh, we're talking about some scheme uh, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, 3,000 samples. Um, the average uh, weight of the blend file was of 2 gigs, but when I was also planning uh, 15 gigabytes on the GPU RAM, so we had to make it uh, with uh, bigger GPUs and uh, also because of the 
uh, of different time zones, we are in New York and we're in Italy, we couldn't work in real time together, so we built a custom system to let them the freedom to uh, store the files, start rendering, rush to preview, and see what uh, exactly was going on uh, on their scene. So we ended up um, uh, rendering the entire movie, which is about 7,000 frames uh, over, uh, a little bit uh, more than 2,500 NVIDIA uh, Titan Ds, so that we had all the space to get uh, the tanks we loaded on. And um, they were starting and stopping and checking the system on their own, checking how things were going. And uh, with 70 shots, uh, which is a 70 shots of Arturo and Gabriano, um, they, they managed their own uh, rendering pipeline. And they just told us they were done in the end. So uh, this system that we built for them, that we made it available for everyone. And I really, really hope that this helped the production of Arturo and Gabriano. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So that's it. Um, what's next? What's next? Yes, we we are trying to 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 do another short movie, maybe an open movie, and try to present next year here. That's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.